Hey TV, as we go into round four of the Super 8s and the Saints travel to Catalan this weekend. Uh, Saints obviously probably got the Challenge Cup semi-final, still fresh in the minds, hoping to get a little bit of revenge over in Perpignan, whereas the Catalan team won't particularly care at the end result because they won the cup at the end of it. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully they're still on the party wagon anyway. Fingers crossed. Um, and I'm glad to report, I know you'd thought you'd seen the end of the group from Tucson, but me and Kevin have been to mediation and we've patched up our differences and we've decided to stay together for your benefit. Two fat lads and a microphone or an iPhone, was it? Yeah, two fat got, lads and an iPhone? Then we got, yeah, then we got called at the start of the season. Nothing, <laughs> nothing's changing. I like the hairy bikers, <laughs> except I'm not hairy. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us are bikers either. That's why I said we're like yeah. going on. <laughs> right, team news. Uh, just one change, um, where Ryan Morgan drops out, uh, took a stray knee to the head uh, against Wigan on Friday, uh, said it wasn't uh, linked to, to uh, his previous ones. So it's not a recurrence, uh, but it's, it's, not a recurrence. it's just another head knock. It's just another head knock. I, I think I tweeted it on Friday, how unlucky can, <coughs> can one man be? He called the stray knee on Friday night, which ended his game, but coming off the back of probably two or three weeks off with the concussion that he yeah. suffered previously. Will we see him again this season? Depends on obviously how quick he recovers, but obviously the, obviously all the talk that's around head knocks, and I'm not going to talk about Ryan individ as an individual, because we don't know the situation and we're not going to pretend to know that. Know that. But it's worrying when, so many, when a player gets so many head knocks, and it's just damn unlucky. You know what? It's, it, it's also oh, it surprised me a little bit, sorry, that he's not been playing in a bit of a head guard. That he's not gone down the Theophage, Johnny Lomax route of just putting one on as a precaution. You know, Johnny had that the head injury earlier yeah, in his yeah, career, yeah. and now that's why he wears the head yeah, guard. Absolutely. Peter Check in the football, yeah, does the same. Um, but we've missed him. We missed him when he went off on Friday night, and we're now going to miss him this week and potentially for longer. And not what we need at this point in the season. So. Can we put him in bubble wrap and just get him back for a semi final? Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully that's that's what you'd you'd be looking yeah. at. But he's been replaced by young hooker Aaron Smith, who comes into the squad uh, again. He's been named once. So twice. not like for like. No, not like for like at all. So Aaron Smith hooker. Yeah. Rumours abound from a few sources yesterday and today that James Roby may miss out this week. Uh, potential shoulder injury. Yeah, yeah it's in bits on social media. Do you know what? If he's woke up in the morning and he slept for and it's like, oh, I saw that. Have a week off, James. Yeah. That's it. Go sit on Calais, Calais Beach. Calais Beach. Don't, don't, don't sit on Calais Beach. <laughs> sit on Calais. And that's it. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be averse to giving. No. It, it, as long as we can, giving people uh, a week off. I Anybody think, who's yawned funny. Yeah. I had think a bad stretch. I think people have, people have said, like, um, Zeb Tyres looked a little bit um, tired. And Zeb Tyres had a great season for us. But he's uh, he, he has looked a little bit tight. The only problem is, have we got someone who can fit in there, and then someone who can come in on the bench? If Catalan have been on the party bus still, yeah, we may as well take one of us over. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not um, sure about remember that. last time everybody slagged them off and they went and battered us. Yeah, because the, uh, they watched it. So uh, I doubt they watched this. No, but we're all right. Um, that said, Friday gone. The Wigan game. The amount, the amount of negativity across the board from Saints fans, you'd think we hadn't won 23 games and you think two weeks to final season, now it's going to go for the rest. It doesn't. We could lose every na game between now and the semi. And it, although it won't be brilliant, you still only have to win the semi-final. Yeah, you want to, yeah, you'd like to be on a good run of form. But we're all old enough to remember getting smashed by Bradford and then two weeks later beating them in a the semi-final to get to Old Trafford. Yeah. That's it. I mean, there's a bit of, obviously, whether it be knee-jerk, whether drink had been taken on Friday. It's the first thing. It's such an instant thing that you get on social media and you start bagging people. I mean, pe there's loads of people offering to kind of buy Ben Barbary's plane ticket back. If all them people want to put that money to one side, uh, I'd love a trip to Oz. So I, I'd, I'd gladly take you up Do you know on what? that offer. But if Ben Barber puts two performances in, in a semi-final and a grand final, and we win it, how many people are going to be coming on mid-October and going to us, yeah, but do you know that game against Huddersfield at home and Wigan where he didn't really look like he was up for it? Is he not that type of player anyway? Is he, 
Because you know that type of player who kind of almost he is he's, he's like a, the luxury like in football you might think of a Mesut Ozil who doesn't really look like Wait, he's doing well, any of Leroy, the Leroy that. Sané has been slagged off today by Tony Cruz. That can I just say for the past two. Uh, videos that I've done it's been lovely not being interrupted by shut you. up Kevin <laughs> but Leroy, Leroy Sané got slagged off today by Tony Cruz because win or lose he always looks the same mm-hmm. I would I'd like to probably go back now and watch videos from the start of the season of games where Barber played and we were smashing everyone and just watch him as an individual for probably 90% of the game because everyone remembers the 10% of explosive moments yeah. where the brilliant scores the tries and sets people up we, he could have had a couple... He, he tried to set a couple of on Friday. If the ball would have been taken in, we'd have scored a couple more. Ifs, buts and maybes, yes. Yeah. But are we lying too much of the the struggles of the team on one man? And is it because of the previous brilliance of him? But don't Poss- care, <laughs> Possibly. Because <laughs> if you think about it, people then will start having a go at our props. If we're not in the field position and the right place is on the park for our backs to then do something with it and Ben Barber to come in... Uh, full back and joining that line on either side then you're always going to be struggling so yeah he is part of uh, the team that is getting beaten yeah he does come across as in he's not playing as well as we remember but I'm sure if people think back to bygone days people think Jamie Lyon never had a bad game but people think Paul Wellens never had a bad game mind you Paul Wellens actually that might be a bad one don't use it as an example (laughs) but Equally right, if none of this talk had come out about Barber going to Australia, if if we changed the situation and Barber was staying for the last 12 months of his deal and there'd been no talk of him going back, would he have been bagged as much? Well, no. Are people just looking for an excuse to have a go because he's going back and are upset by it? Possibly, possibly. I mean, I, it's, I don't know people's agendas personally. I don't know at all. Uh, but, but if you find a little, almost like a little... Um, blip in someone's character or a chink in their armour or whatever people will get hold of it and will run with it and you know what Barber hasn't been shining like he has but let's look at the team as a whole rather than just bagging him and thinking right well are our forwards on top I mean our forwards were on top against Wakefield weren't they against a good pack though so if they don't I always say Wigan are always a 7 out of 10 pack at the worst some of the players might be 5 out of 10 but others will drag them up by being an 8, 9, 10 out of 10 and that's what we can do and we're going to have been wound up by Sean Wade and if our props and our second rowers haven't kind of been been ready for that then that do, that blame doesn't lie at Ben Barber's door we've seen many a, a great a great Saints side defeated by a poor Wigan side it's just how it is that's the derby for you they can go either way Nobody's remembering the twice this season that we smashed, well, beat Wigan, we didn't yeah. smash them. No. We beat them on Good Friday, could have gone either way. We beat them at their place, they were lucky to score. Yeah. So, one game doesn't define the season, no, no matter how much people want to say it does. That's it. And we're not, um, as you say, we're not Barber apologists. He hasn't, he hasn't played well last no, few weeks, no. but I think there's a bit much made of it. That's it, I mean, you can look at Friday, and I, I said after the game that I wasn't really impressed with Wigan, and I wasn't, they were better than us. They were the better team on the day. But that's only because they took the chances. And if we'd have taken our chances, that game, again, that would have been another one of them games that swings. Yeah, it's and like been, sliding been, doors, Yeah, it? been in the balance. We didn't, again, ifs, buts and maybes. One of the big things that, that obviously, we've just mentioned it, Ryan Morgan going off, so Louis has to go into the centres. Louis goes into the centres and does a relatively good job for a big yeah. lad playing at centre. Great, he's, great he's, offload for the yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. But then you miss him in the pack. Yeah. And you miss his yards, he's running. And you also miss kind of... He defends in the middle, he doesn't defend out wide. So that, that's where you miss. And I thought Louis had a great game. This isn't me bagging him saying... Oh, yeah. He's not a centre, is he? No. He's not. Uh, but that's what you miss then. And as soon as you take one of your big, quick, kind of men who winds people... Some, some of our fans don't like Louis. Some don't. I, I love him. I love the fact he lines other fans yeah. up and yeah. other players up because we need one like that. Yeah. Although I would like someone who was an aggressive type like that as well, a bit like a Jason Hooper. Or a we need Nicholson. we need a grub, yeah, a, gre- a Greg Baird. Yeah, somebody like that. Maybe so, not getting banned for as long. No, but a, a yeah. grub who doesn't get caught like yeah. Jason Hooper. Yeah, Jason Hooper. I'd, I'd love a Jason Hooper yeah. in our team. Nine times out of ten, if you allow Wigan to get on top of yeah, yeah, win the rook, get aggressive. 
you're gonna lose. Yeah, and absolutely. unfortunately, that's what happened the other night. Um, will that will that result the other night have any effect on the semi final? If no. we or final if we just no. play? No, absolutely not. What, it can happen. Whatever happens, that can happen on the day. Yeah. Right. Um, that's enough to talk about the derby. Warrington in a couple of weeks when we played them, by the way. I need. I want to make this point on video because Bill Cove from we did made made it the other night. Sky haven't announced what game is going to be played on the Thursday night yet. So Saints are selling tickets for the Friday. Fans are making arrangements for the Friday. Shifts with work, kids, etc. Babysitting. Sky can quite easily tell us that while we've been moved to the Thursday night. Um, we don't know. There's something wrong somewhere in the game when games can be moved at that short notice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You, fast. You, you'd think that everybody knows how the playoff system works. Name your games. I mean, they know the top four is set yeah. as, as it is. And it, was, it wasn't it was really going to change. You might get someone who's in form and obviously trying to make a push of it. Like Huddersfield were probably in that, that um, bracket before they got to banjo by Wakefield at the weekend. But surely you know which game is going where and you can yeah. turn around and, and share them out. It's it's it's, 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 just, it's yeah. not it's not fair on fans. Um, well, that's it. I'll be honest. If it gets moved to the Thursday, I will be mightily peeved. Yeah, see. Uh, and then obviously, Warrington trying to sell corporates for the game. How can they? How can they be expected to say, "Oh, by the way, you know all them corporate guests who we're going to bring on the Friday night to entertain wine and dines, and they can all have a nice snooze on that Saturday morning." Well, you have to come on a Thursday night now instead, yeah. and now I've got to work on a Friday. Ridiculous. That's it. It, it might not be our game, but. You know, no, but it's, it's, it's you know, so no, yeah, it'll it'll work out for whoever's fans it is. It's it's a it's a wind up, and to be honest, by now things like that should be settled. Set we're like, we like a good moan, don't we? We won't mention the Denver test where we said, but we told you so. Not happening, is it? You That's it. Yeah, you just mentioned it. All right, right, sorry, but yeah, this year's was a one off. Uh, the promoter hasn't paid the money that they owed to the RFL, um, and. New Zealand have arranged the test in Australia uh, New, is in Australia or New Zealand next year against Tonga for when it should have been uh, and potentially the World Cup's not going to be in America either I did see the one positive apparently best to find out now that the promoters haven't got the money to potentially pay for the World Cup you know what I, I find it quite sad to be honest um, I know obviously on especially on Twitter we've mentioned about how it's, it was potentially the wrong stadium and how there could have been more made of it the lack of promotion. Yeah. The location. Yeah. The but, stadium that's too big. But the T V deal not getting announced until twenty four hours before. But it's but it is still sad. On a channel that shows Wiffle Ball. Look up Wiffle Ball if you haven't. <laughs> but it is it is sad it is. that that nothing's gonna come of it. That it's not going to be the three match series and you can kind of build something there. It is. It's it's another one of those that you just turn around and say, typical rugby league. It's typical. Typical say. <laughs> yeah, typical say. Thankfully, it's not typical no. say. But it's it's something that we keep shooting ourselves in the foot with things like these. Do you think, for me, for expansion, you can't just put teams in random locations and expect them to work. For me, you need a little bit of, I don't know, rivalries or like teams bunch of like. So I'm not anti expansion. So I'm, I'll be made up if Toronto Blue come up this year. I'll be made up if Toulouse come up at the expense of Witness and Leeds. Witness, bye bye, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get lynched. <laughs> few, the death, few the death threats once again. Um, but teams was there. So for me, if you want to put another team in North America, go like the East Coast, Buffalo, New York, that way. So where where Toronto can develop a rivalry with. You see, the the whole thing is they should have their own league. Ideally, that would be the thing. They haven't got any players. They're just they're just obviously busting them in. But it's gonna be a long bus ride. <laughs> they're just playing them in from. The but, middle of Yorkshire. Yeah, but... They don't even live there, do they? The, they're the, all the, English players. The thing would be a professional league in North America. That would be the best thing. As soon as you've got a professional league in North America, if France grows as well and you've got the Super League, then you've got the Aussie one and you've got what could be almost like a World Club Cup. Do you know what I'd be tempted to do? There's the the North American Rugby League, Jacksonville, Philadelphia, and yeah. the likes playing it. Yeah. Could you not... Get the best of the best from that league, and at least pick four or five of them, put them into an M. And even if you call them North America, and then if North America Rugby League establishes themselves as a Super League team, then you look to develop another team, and maybe then you change the name. I don't know. You see, I, I mean, 
Toronto are in the system now. I prefer to see an American League rather than more people bust into Super League. Toronto's Canada, by the way. Doesn't matter. But for Obviously. me, Toronto will only be a success. Not if they get to Super League. It'll be in 10 years down the line yeah. if they've got Canadian players coming through the system playing rugby. Because yeah. they, they, they've got to have some sort of progression system. Like, Look at the Catalan team. How many French players are in that team? It works. They're not just bussing in. 10 Joel Tompkins or 10 Sam Tompkins. One's enough. Yeah, they get, free, yeah, they get some English players, but they've got a core of French. Yeah. And that's why it works. And that's why the French fans come out to support it, because they're watching their own players. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, don't get me wrong, I'd like to see a couple more French players in that team. They've, they've, they have got a couple of superstars. You tend to think that some of them might be getting a little bit older now. But, yeah, that's it. I'd, I'd love to see a strong French league, a strong North American league. Super League getting stronger as well, whether that is as 12, 14, whatever we go to. What's your thoughts on the expansion? Uh, sorry, on the system for next year. What would you like to see? Meetings next week. Is it? And are they going to change it before the, before the season starts? For me, best playoff system, top five. Yeah, absolutely. The way it used to be where you got more chances the higher up you finished. And I, to be honest, I'd probably go 14 team Super League. And people say there's not the players, but. If and, you... and keep Leeds in it. <sighs> Don't know. What's your thoughts on Witness? I'm just firing questions out. Yeah. Um, Sad to see them go? Yeah. Yeah. Do they yeah. deserve to be in Super League? Well, no, on field, no. Probably off field, no. But they're, they're, one of the, they're one of the historic teams, but not everyone. <laughs> Not everyone deserves to be in Super League. It's like if we were see in that, that have, yeah, I can see that. If, if we were in, if we were in that position though, we wouldn't deserve to be in Super League. No, no one's got a divine right to be in there. Going back to your question, I'd go fourteen teams and I'd go top five. I would have relegation, automatic promotion and relegation, and people who want every everyone gets a prize or every game matters. Oh. No, doesn't matter. You want to go try watching Burnley versus Yeovil on a March afternoon. Everton when... versus Rotherham. Yeah. Same, a League <laughs> Cup game where you know that no matter what happens, Everton will batter Rotherham and then they'll get somebody like Chelsea in the next round and get knocked out. But you still go. Yeah. And you'll never win the League but Cup. The, but that's it. The, the issue is people want everyone, every child no, gets a prize yeah, and it's, it's rubbish. Yes. Games, if you don't go to games because they're non entity and you've got a season ticket, or you want to walk on, then that, that's a problem with the products on the field and you yeah. need to speak to your club about that. You need to The club needs to make sure that you've got the products on the field that's worth watching. Because if Saints versus Warrington was 7th versus 10th in the league, but you knew that it, it was good, you were going to be entertained, you would still go to yeah. it. If you finish mid-table, get better. Yeah, exactly. You want you okay. Make your team get better, not, ooh, well... Can we finish eighth and just have a slight chance of winning the championship? No, you don't deserve to. Well, this is enough. You, you look at look at the Aussies now. Was the Aussies top eight all separated by two points? Yeah, um, that's what that's what we should be aspiring to. Yeah. Because if we lost, not a race to the bottom. Yeah, if we lost six seven games in a year, but still finished fourth because everybody else had done the same. Sound. Everybody was taking points off everybody. Fine. If we finished tenth because we weren't good enough that year, but the league was strong enough. Fine. And do you know what? That's 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 sports. And do you know what? There's nothing wrong. There's actually nothing wrong with this super eight system and the way it works. If the eight are all decent sides, the problem is it's not really worked. Why? Because the top four are currently so much better than everybody else. That's it. Going back to me saying I'd, I'd expand to fourteen and people saying there's not the players. People turning around saying not the there's not the players. I think you've got to give people chances. You've got to if you, if you carry on at ten or twelve. The sport won't grow. You go to 14 and you get people bringing in a youth system like Saints have done, like Wigan do, like Leeds do, like Warrington have started doing, and bring your own players through. Leeds? They just use that. Well, they, they did 10 years ago anyway. But you, you, you think, yeah, they've, they've got to bring players through. Like Witness are going to have to start doing it because they won't be able to afford to yeah. buy people. So it'll be a team of Witness lads and they'll yeah. play for the shirt. That's that's what needs to happen to get more plays in Super. And if you want to see the issue about why we should have a reserve grade, Featherstone from the weekend. No more loans. There's not a lot of dual reg at the minute. 
they played Lee with 14 players in the squad because they couldn't get anyone in because they didn't have enough players because they haven't got a reserve grade. And still beat Lee. And still beat Lee. That says a lot for Lee. But yeah, uh, I think we've well ran today tonight. So we have nothing to talk about. Yeah. If you're still watching, give yourself a badge. If you're still watching and you're a witness fan, <laughs> get a life. <laughs> oh, definitely death threats coming our way, isn't it? Yours? He doesn't like them either. He just won't say it on camera because he's scared. <laughs> right. Uh, we will catch you on Saturday afternoon where we'll pretend to be in France again. You're wearing your stripy t-shirts. And some garlic round my neck. Onions. On Not garlic. <laughs> just... <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll pretend to be in France for our instant fan reaction. Uh, don't forget to watch and we'll catch you soon.